I love this music. I, I love this label with my heart and my fucking soul. I really do. It makes me choke. I love it. I think it's, it's been the most important thing in my life. And um, I, I, I just want to protect it. I want to protect the legacy. And I don't know it's in great hands to be able to do that now. I think these guys have got the, have got the, they've got the fucking character to do it, man. I mean, it really makes me get a little bit kind of sensitive about it. I, I love these guys. I really do. Going down to the Blue Note, that was the first time I sort of encountered Metalhead. That's when like this whole new world opened up for me. You know, I was hearing this music really loud, and then that's when I got it. You know, sometimes you can listen to music at low volume, and it's it's completely different to when you hear it at full blast, and you, you know you don't really understand it in the same way. So for me, that experience that was like soon after that, I started buying records, and I was just take, took it from there. You know what I mean? That's that's where it started. You know, we're as far out of the city, as far out of the growth as metalheads as you can get at that time, and we're both pretty young. Like listening to tape packs and you know listening to rave tapes, and then hearing this tune, going, "Ah, oh, that tune's wicked." And then there was a local shop uh, called Destiny Records. They were the only stockists in drum and bass. And being in there one day and being past this tune, not knowing, you know, what you're listening to at that time, you know, kind of, you know, 16 years old, blissfully unaware before the internet of what you're buying. He's like, "This is a good tune." And then staring down at this head's logo and listening to that tune and going like, fucking hell, like, that's that tune. Do you know what I mean? And then it's just like, bag it, done. I think it was like, Essentials or something like that. It wasn't like Essential Mix. It was like a DJ Essentials or DJ. It's like a series that you come out with. It was like Fabio ones and Carl Cox, people like that. And I think the one I heard was a Goldie one. And that was the first time I saw Metalheads. I think it was spelled with an S as well, not a Z. I remember that specifically because it was the first time I sort of heard him DJ and the music was just really dark and hard and that's what stood out to me because I was listening to like, you know, techno and I'd heard a bit of Bookham stuff but and then that was the first time and that's why it stood out, that's why I can remember that so much I think. My friend from the past, a guy called Sam McCrow, he introduced me to this album called Timeless uh, and it was at the time of my life where I wasn't putting things in boxes. There were... There are a few turbulent times in my past and this album just seemed to like match up with them and treat me gently but with this sense of melancholy and the jungle in it. I wasn't really aware that it was jungle. I, I was aware that it was just music. And the strings and the vocals, the, the combination of um, yeah, the vibe, the aesthetic, yeah, that's what that was the original birthplace of my Metalhead's understanding. That, that album there. Uh, it would have been back in '96, maybe '97, and it was more about I used to um, sort of have a mix with one of my mates, Henry, back in the day. You know, sort of finish school, go back to his, have a mix, and I was buying more sort of hardcore rave kind of tunes. He was always trying to get me into the jungle, jungle stuff, and I was never quite biting, but and then he played Pulp Fiction, and that was kind of, that was the first, the first time I was like, shit, this is that bass line kind of thing. So then, that was the next record I bought bass it in, and I started the whole thing. This is, this is the Metalheads family, man. Right? And, I want the best for the family, I want the best for what, for what we're about. It's time for me to vicariously, seancically, which is not a word in the dictionary by the way, put these guys together, which we have done, and just go right, go at it, challenge yourselves. These guys have the ability to create beautiful sculpture in a real natural way. You know, within the structure of this music, it has this stuff that's really natural. It's only until you sandblast the dirt off somebody's wood, you actually see the beauty of it. Nature is the best Picasso in the world, man. I listen to some of this music now, especially what I've heard from these boys, and it really, really turns me on, man. It's like, oh, that's, that's beautiful. That's, that's really beautiful. I wanted to reach a certain plateau of label. Like, I started off, you know, 
pretty much in the bottom of the food chain in terms of releases and what labels I was signed to. Some people start right at the top. But I was at the bottom and I was sort of climbing and climbing. And I knew that I didn't want to stop till I reached the upper echelon of labels, if you will. So, yeah, getting on Metalheads was definitely one of my goals. And then that sort of evolved into an album. And then I had to actually write it. And that's when I started thinking about stuff. And that's when the pressure kicked in. But up, that, up, up until that point, it was just, you know, focusing on, on, on the prize of, and just going for that. But then when I got there, that's when I started thinking about, you know, me being a kid and all the history and legacy of the label and what it actually means for drum and bass. I mean, it's one of the labels that formed the music as we know it. Basically, we write a tune called All That We Are with um, a good friend of ours, FD. And we were writing it in the studio and we were like, you know, we were doing our thing for subtitles at the time and it was kind of like, right, this, this has got metalheads written all over it, do you know what, right, let's just do it. And I just kind of tried to do the, you know like the whole stories of him walking into Pete Tong and they're like, this is for you? Like me being me, I was like, alright, I'm just going to do it, like emailed him, like, right, we've written you this. And he was, he was on holiday at the time. And then you get the phone call back, so, you want to be in the big boys, yeah, do you know what I mean? And I'm just like, uh... <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Yeah, well, you know, and then it, it, it's kind of, it's really, it's really flattering, but it's also kind of very enchanting because, you know, he starts talking about music in a completely different formula to you than you're used to. It's really refreshing to hear that there's someone out there that's not about, yeah, that's wicked, that's sick and that, and Goldie starts breaking it down for the first time. And like, it's like art, you know, it's, it's like, that's a piece of music. I want to get behind that, I believe in that, and I, you know, I'm prepared to put my label into that. It means a lot to me to be uh, a recording artist for Metalheads because when I was getting into it properly, it was definitely the label that shaped my opinion of the music. I think Metalheads and Goldie could maybe hear within the music that I was sending to him in the beginning was the, the connection I had with the label even before I was on the label. So it makes perfect sense and that's why it means a lot to me because it's almost like, you know, I've started there and I've come and now I'm releasing you know, music on the label. With Metal Hurts and Goldie, it's, it's more like he's giving you the freedom to basically do what you want, you know, if you want to put strings in there, electric guitar, you know, do some crazy whatever, you know you've got the freedom to go and experiment and do some avant-garde weird shit. I feel like I've got quite a sense of understanding about this idea of impermanence um, and when I, I, I meet and talk to Goldie I, I feel like he's very deeply connected to that idea of impermanence as well and that it comes out in the logo the the skull and the headphones it represents the perishability of the human body and how the music will continue for well long after we're gone Deserve more than